Hi, this is a tutorial on how to set up a chi-square test in an Excel file so that you can see what you're doing. So a chi-square test is when you test a hypothesis in a two-way table of data. Most statistical textbooks for undergraduates and graduates that is at an introductory level will give you a chapter on how to handle a chi-square test. It's another way of testing a hypothesis, seeing whether some effect happened or not. The thing that goes on with a chi-square is that the data can be loaded into a 2 by 2 table. So you have one variable with two levels and another variable with two levels. So I'm going to show you how to set up the data because college courses have a tendency to give you the data looking like this, which is basically one variable with a long list of numbers and another variable with a long list of numbers and then a description of what's going on, and you have to figure out how to group them first, and then how to carry out the test. The hypothesis is, is your group membership going to impact on your ability to pass or fail the test at the end of the semester? And we need to know the actual data that was obtained in the experiment, and we want to be able to predict what the expectancies were given the hypothesis, and then we want to calculate the chi-square statistic. So what you're going to do first is you're going to put out the data from your question in these two lines just like they give it to you in your problem set and label them very clearly in terms of what they are. This is really important especially if you're afraid of statistics because if you don't label your work as you go along you can get lost in the sauce really quickly. Now in this particular study Study group one, so all the people that were in group one, and there's 40 students in total in this test, 20 in one group and 20 in the other. In study group one, they did active learning with tutoring. So what this meant was they had a textbook, and they had problem sets, and they had lectures, and they had mentors around, and they were able to kind of discuss between them what was going on and try the test and see if they matched up with the answers in the textbook and work out how to do these things. And there were people around that they could talk to as they went along through this semester about why they weren't getting the answer that was given in the textbook. So that's a very active kind of way of learning. In study group two, they were given a textbook and they were working through the textbook alone. They had nobody to talk to, not even their, their professor. They were taking quizzes as they went along, but they weren't getting any feedback other than, yes, you're right, no, you're wrong, on these quizzes. So they were passive learning. They had to go back and take a look at the chapter again and see if they could figure out why they weren't doing so well or why they didn't get a good grade on the quiz. And then along comes the end of the semester, and both groups got the same final exam for the statistics class. Variable B is did you pass it or not? So in that case, one means yes, you passed the final exam, and zero means no, you didn't pass the final exam. In order to do the chi-square test, you need to organize that. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how many people from the active group passed the test. And you can just go down this little group of ones and count them. So a one means pass. So among the people who are also in this group one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 people who passed. So we can put that up here in the first cell of the 2x2 two two table where it is study group active, passed. Now obviously there's only 20 people in this group, so if 15 passed, that means that 5 of them failed. Another way to do this is to use the count function in Excel. So we're going to come down here to the bottom and we want to count if people got a 1 or a 0 in this particular group. Now you go down here, here and we write equals count if parentheses and it is H24. That's that first one in the group of people that are also in study group 2. So the two variables there are 2 for the group one for pass the test, and we want to go down to the last one, which is H43, and what we're interested in is whether they passed, which is one. So we put the range, and then we want to see whether or not that's in that cell 
close the parentheses and hit enter, and that shows you that five people in the passive group actually passed the test. So we want to go passive passed. Remember, you want to label everything so you don't forget what you did. Now we want to do the opposite for the, the people who flunked. So that's count if h24 again to h43. This time we're looking for the zero. Close the parentheses and it tells us 15. So that's the passive group. Passive group failed. Okay, now your next task. You see your top panel has filled in. You've got all of the passed and failed values for the active group and for the passive group. You know you're supposed to have 40 students and you have 20 in each row and 20 in each column. So that's the beginning. Now you need to calculate the expectancies. Do SG1 and pass, SG1 and failed, SG2 and passed, and SG2 and failed. And you want to calculate these. Now there's an easier way to do this, but first I'm going to tell you how to calculate them. When you're doing the calculation, you're taking that grand total of the total number of values that you have in the whole table of 40. So that's the grand total times row total divided by the grand total. And then that's times the column total by the grand total. I'm going to make this big so you can see this. And you'd basically do the same thing for each of these areas. Now, if you have different values, this is really important. If you've got a hypothesis where you're expecting a certain group is going to do a third as well as the other group or some other kind of value, then doing it this way is the best way to do it. So for instance, for SG active past, you would be taking 40 times 20 divided by 40 times 20 divided by 40. And essentially what that is is 10 because we have a very simple thing going on here. We, we expect all of the people in these two groups to be of equal intelligence and equal ability. And if there's the null hypothesis, uh, it can't be rejected. That's because the teaching methods had nothing to do with their ability to pass the final test. So in reality, we can take a look sometimes at the hypothesis and say, well, we expect all of these squares to be exactly the same. If you don't expect them to be exactly the same, then this is how you figure it out. You take the grand total times the row total divided by the grand times the column total divided by the grand, and those are the specific ones that match up with what you're looking at. And that's how you get your expected. In our case, it's really simple. <laughs> We thought we expected everybody to do the same, and we thought about 50% would pass in each group. So we set up our expectancies exactly that way. So that's the second thing we need to do. Now the third thing we need to do is populate this table that will give us the actual chi-square value. So the formula says you find your observed, you find your expected, you find the distance between those two values, you square that distance, I'm hitting format and auto fit, and then for the final chi-square value, you take that squared number and you divide it again by um, the expected number, whatever was in this column. So now what we want to do is move these values from over here in the obtained or observed table and in the expected. If you want to use the spreadsheet again to do a, work another problem for another data set, then instead of just taking the values here and typing them in, which we certainly do, it's a better idea to use a little formula to grab these values. So for active pass, we know that's in column L, and it's in row 5, so we put that there. And for active pass expectations, expected, we know that's also in column L, but it's in row 13, I think. Yep. And then active fail is in column M in row 5. And the expected 
for active fail is in also in column M in row 13. Passive is in column L, row 6. Expected is in column L, row 14. And passive fail is in column M, row 6. And expected is also in column M, row 14. And now what you've done is you've set up this particular part of your job here, finding the final chi-square, in such a way that if you change the data over here, it will be reflected in the calculation and you'll get the correct chi-square. And the reason why you will get the correct chi-square, this is a little thing, is I've done the same thing here. Under chi-square, I've said equal to W9 because this is where the calculation lives, but I want to pull it out so I can see it. So before we move on to what the degrees of freedom are and how to find the criterion value and all that stuff, let me explain what's going on in these three columns of the calculation. And we filled in all of these. The next thing that has to happen in order to get the final chi-square is to take the observed value and take away the expected value. So that's observed minus expected. And we could just put 5 in here, minus 5, minus 5, 5, because it, obviously it's an easy calculation. But in order to use this spreadsheet again for a different chi-square, for a different problem set, it's better to put in the formula. So here's the value, and then up here you can see what the formula was. It is equal S5 minus T5. See? Equals S5 minus T5. And then we just go ahead and click on that one. Go Control C, highlight the next three lines, and do Control V, and it will modify that formula so that it's specific to this row. So the next one is equals S6 minus T6, S7 minus T7, S8 minus T8. And you know you've done the right thing if your sum at the bottom of observed minus expected comes out to be zero. The next step you have to take is to take this observed minus ex expected and times it by itself. Now again, you could just do 5 times 5 is 25, minus 5 times minus 5 is 25, but in order to have a formula in there that would work when you change the values over here, you want to put the formula in. So that means U5 is where O minus E lives, and the formula here would be equals U5 times U5, so column U row 5. Once again, highlight it, do control C, then highlight the next three, and do control V, and it will modify them to fit that row. So you've got equal U5 times U5, equal U6 times U6, etc., etc., and the, and the um, total at the bottom. The final step is to get the values for each of these four cells that is this value, observed minus expected squared, and then you're dividing it by expected. So the formula there would be V5, that's where your squared value lives, divided by expected, which is T5. So you put equals V5 divided by T5, highlight it, control C, highlight the next three rows, and control V, and now you've got each one of these values, the squared amount of the distance between observed and expected, divided by what was expected, sort of like your chance value, and you add all that up, and that gives you the chi-square value. And then we have degrees of freedom. I'm going to do format auto fit so you can see that. And that equals the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. We have two rows of data. Here we are in the original. And two columns of data. So there we go. Column 1, column 2, row 1, row 2. So number of rows minus 1, number of columns minus 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. So the degrees of freedom is equal to 1 times 1 or 1. So that's how you go to the table and see what the heck is up. Now, you're either going to have a teeny tiny table in the chapter that will give you some of the values, and you can take a guess at an alpha level of 0.05 or 0.01 whether or not your chi-square 
is significant, or it will have a table at the back of the book that will give you a criterion value, and that will tell you. You might also be able to check and find the exact number of the, um, you might be able to check the exact probability level by using the chi-square calculation inside of Excel or by checking an external an external source. So I'm going to show you the external source that I like to use, and that's www.vassarstats.net. I click on distribution, and it shows you how to find the p-values for all kinds of different distributions. So if you only have a degree of freedom between 1 and 20, you can use this. So I click here. My degree of freedom is 1. I say OK, and then it shows me the table. And we want to go down here until we find our chi-square of 10, and the p-value is 0 0.001565. Now we can come back in here, and we can go to formulas, more functions, statistics, and we want to scroll down to chi-square test, and we add in the actual range of the data. So we have our cursor here, and here's the data up here. So we go click on one, go over, come down, that's the range. Then we want to click in expected, click there, go over, go down, and that's the range. And then you will see that we get the same probability level, 0 0.001565 or 0 0.0016 if you want to round it up. It's always much, much better not to use an outside um, statistical package to figure this out the first time, at least once whenever you're doing a chi-square. You want to do it yourself so you can see how it works. And you see that you've got the observed, the expected, you can see how the formula works, and you just kind of build it all the way up. Then the next time you can use a calculator if you want, or a um, statistical package to get it, get the result. But initially, you really want to do this on your own. And if you set this up right, you can do any chi-square problem just by changing what the data is here, what the expectancies are here, and then it will just fill out that table. And then you go ahead and look for your criteria value or get a p-value from an outside source like vassarstats.net or from the chi-square test inside of Excel. So I hope that helps.